Now, okay, uh, one of the things that the president is saying right now is that this whole Russia thing, total witch hunt, okay? <laughs> Do you think there's any chance this is going to turn out to be a witch hunt, that there really is no there there? Because there, while there is a whole lot of smoke, while uh, we actually haven't actually seen the spark of the fire. It, we won't know until we know. Uh, it's totally, everybody is entitled to the presumption of innocence. It's totally possible this is all just a bizarre series of coincidences. But we, we, now, we now owe it to ourselves as a country to figure out. Because there are too many things that haven't, that weren't explained ahead of time, that were exposed and only belatedly admitted to. Like, just last week, Reuters reported on 18 new previously undisclosed contacts between the Trump campaign and Russian government officials. The ones like, they hadn't talked about before. No, like, still we're getting 18 new ones now? Like, you guys know there's some interest in this topic, right? If you haven't done anything wrong, you kind of have to tell people what really happened. They still haven't explained why it took them 18 days to fire or get the resignation from Mike Flynn after the Justice Department came to the White House and said, he's a Russian agent. Um, <laughs> which is like, you 18 with a days... With a side of turkey. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, I mean, there's just stuff that needs to be explained. And there were so many contacts between the campaign and people close to Trump with people in the Kremlin or people who are close to Vladimir Putin. And that stuff just... Uh, we need to know why there were so many contacts. It's possible that it was totally anodyne, that it had nothing to do with the Russian attack on the election that was happening at that same time. Mm -hmm. It's possible that it had... There was nothing nefarious about it at all, but there was a million contacts. And so we need to know about that. We also need to know if the firing of the FBI director and the other contacts that the president had with the FBI about the investigation um, were something other than obstruction of justice. I mean, is, what, what can be the... It, I mean, he's saying he was thinking about Russia when he fired the FBI director who's reading, leading the Russia investigation. Well, an argument we is made that the president actually cannot obstruct justice, that, that sort of the normal laws do not apply to him, that only political action can be taken against him. So in other words, he can't go on trial for obstruction of justice, but he could be uh, put on an impeachment trial by the House and the Senate but do you think there's any chance that would happen if the Democrats do not get back the House and the Senate? I try to not see it in, in partisan terms, because I can't... I mean, if, if it's proven that, the, let's say, the Department of Justice Inspector General or the FBI itself determines that the FBI director was fired and other actions were taken to impede that investigation into the president and his campaign because he wanted that investigation to be knocked off course, it is hard for me to believe that Republicans would not rise above their party in that instance. Well, that would be nice. It, I want, I believe that, and I want <laughs> no, to believe I, that. I, I, that would be lovely. I mean, that would be a very yeah. important thing. We, mm -hmm. we, we need to know. But a lot of people's answer. standards and norms have lowered you know, because Donald Trump is president. There yeah. are a lot of things that you say, oh, then that's okay. You know, for instance, uh, like white evangelical voters, uh, in the last election cycle, the number one criteria for electing a candidate was character, mm -hmm. you know, or morality, and it was the very last this time because the, they had to flip their standard in order to elect the man they want. And so my worry is that Donald Trump will just degrade everyone's standards and morals as we, you know, pick sides. Yeah, and we're going to have to decide if we're that country or not. Mm -hmm. And I think we're not. I think that people, it, when confronted with real issues of national interest, that people do the right thing. Has there ever been a president who has this much leaking that this many people are willing to confirm? Because it's like four, eight, twelve people within the White House are confirming these leaks. Yeah. Uh, what kind of... And not that many people work in the White House, right? They haven't, like, staffed up all the I top know. people. What you kind know? of boss must he be <laughs> that everyone is willing to throw him under the bus? Because they must feel like he's dangling over the wheels of the bus every minute, so they want to turn him in before he turns them in. We've also never had a White House this early on in the administration where it's actually a good reporting strategy to just send your stringers to go park outside major law firms to watch as White House officials walk in looking for defense counsel. But that's what's going on in this administration right now. Well, yeah. I'll be watching tonight. I can't wait to hear what you say about Thank Mike you, Flynn. Thanks Thank so you. much for being Thanks. here, Rachel. Thanks. The Rachel Maddow Show is on MSNBC. It's the number one show. Rachel Maddow, everybody. We'll be right back with Tony-nominated star of Dear Evan Hansen, Ben Platt. Stick around.